Hi guys, it's Mark from Burton Bibles and I uh, hope you're all well. I'm just releasing this video today. Um, it is a comparison video. We're going to take a look at the uh, Thompson Chain Reference Bible from Kirkbride in America. And we're going to take a look at the fourth edition, which was uh, produced in 1964 or copyrighted 1964. And we're going to compare it to the fifth edition, which is still with us today. It came out in 1988. Um, and we're going to take a look at the differences because uh, from what I have seen in the fifth edition, there is no clear um, list of differences, really. And so somebody was asking me about that um, on my comment section on one of my videos. So I thought we would uh, it would be a useful exercise just to take a look at them because I do have both editions and we can take a look at them side by side because there are some very interesting changes and differences um, that uh, I can make you aware of. OK, let's uh, go to the desk and take a look at these two editions. OK, then, guys, uh, here we have the two uh, Bibles in question. Uh, on the left here is my uh, my granddad's old uh, 1964 Thompson Chain Reference 4th edition. And on the right here is my own personal church Bible publishers produced Thompson Chain Reference Bible 5th edition from 1988. I bought this last year uh, and I believe the printing, if we're going to be accurate about things, the printing is from, I think it was 2018, uh, it's from January 2018, it's the 21st printing um, of this Bible. So we have the two editions in question, 4th and 5th edition. Now, the easiest way to un start to unpack this is probably to go straight away to the 5th edition, and then right at the beginning uh, of the Bible, um, we will see this page here, which is the preface to the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. And it will there tell us in this paragraph, the first paragraph here, it will tell us the new introduction. Uh, now, this isn't the whole of the changes, but this is certainly the first place to look. And it says that it's been updated um, uh, by... Uh, in this new edition, the archaic or obsolete words are shown in the margin opposite the verses with the number in the helps where the contemporary definition is given. So basically, what you will find is a section that is numbered 4452, which is a glossary. And we'll just flick to it now. It's just before the concordance. Um, and here it is at the back. It's after the archaeological supplement. And it's before the concordance. So this is an abbreviated glossary of Old English. So wherever you see in the margins, uh, and we'll look at some examples shortly, 4452, it will give you a definition of the word that it is referring to. And this is one of the major changes between the 4th and 5th edition. You won't find this in the 4th edition. So a glossary of Old English, Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek words in the authorised translation. Now, uh, just to give you a couple of examples of this from the 5th edition, we'll go to Psalm chapter 7 and verse 16. Uh, Psalm chapter 7, so one from the old, one from the new. Psalm chapter 7 and verse 16, and it uses the word there, and I'll just uh, magnify in, it uses the word pate. It says there, uh, his mischief shall return unto his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. So 4452 in the margin there, it says pate. And when we go to 4452, which we had there before, and I uh, switched away from it, should have used some bookmarks or some ribbons. <laughs> um, we will see there pate. Uh, and it says, crown of the head, Psalm 7, verse 16. So that's an easy, easy one to um, to suss, so to speak. Interestingly enough, if we look at that passage, that same passage in the fourth edition, we will see there, and we, we've got it here, it says, pate, but there is just a gap where um, that 4452 um, chain reference is. Um, an example from the New Testament, Romans uh, chapter 7, verse 8. So Romans chapter 7 and verse 8, it says there, another, uh, these are all old English words. So uh, the Bible is trying to, uh, this particular Bible is trying to just help out by giving us some definitions. 7 verse 8, it says concupiscence, one of my favourite words from the King James uh, Bible, concupiscence. And it says in the margin, 4452, concupiscence. Again, that is just missing. 
uh, from the uh, fourth edition. And when we switch over to 4452, we will see there uh, concupiscence, which is, uh, where is it? There it is. And it will tell us that it means coveting, abnormal desire, lust, etc. Romans 7 verse 8. So that is one of the uh, major differences between the 4th and the 5th edition, the addition of this glossary of archaic um, words uh, in the KJV. Um, but what else is interesting, and again, this isn't, um, this isn't illustrated, I don't believe, is the, uh, where it shows you the Bible translations. Um, this is always a graphic that I that I love. The origin and growth of the English Bible. Here we have it in the fourth edition. So it's basically telling you the uh, translations of the Bible, how the Bible was developed. Um, so from Wycliffe and Tyndale um, all the way through and the manuscripts that those Bibles rest upon. So here we have the King James Version um, and you can trace all of that. And it finishes at the American Standard Version and the American Standard Version is dated 1900 to 1901. Um, so when we go over to the same chart in our fifth edition, we will see there that that has actually been developed and updated quite substantially. Uh, obviously, this Thompson um, uh, is from 1964, and obviously we've had quite a lot of um, Bible translations um, there. And if we find that same chart, here it is. So now we have the edition of the Dead Sea Scrolls um, and we have uh, on top of the 1901, uh, we have this shelf, if you like, of translations. So we've got the uh, Revised Standard Version, the Barclay, the Amplified, uh, the New English Bible, the New American Standard Bible. Um, we have the Living Bible, I think that is. Um, today's English version, new uh, new international version and the new King James is the latest one at 1982. Obviously, we could add a, add a fair few more to that, couldn't we? Now, um, we could add uh, the uh, ESV and we could add the CSB and things like that. Um, so obviously, there's a list now of translations that are more modern than 1901. And it does, over the page, tell you... English versions since 1901, and it gives you a rundown about that. Of course, none of that is in the fourth edition. It just uh, it just finishes there. So an updated um, origin and growth of the English Bible, uh, which is quite nice to have. Um, but also worthy of note is the archaeological supplement has been extended um, and again uh, developed. So what you will find in the fourth edition is that the archaeological supplement, and just so we're being uh, clear, I'll show you how the how that looks. It starts with this Rosetta Stone image, um, and it is a really nice, again, one of the fantastic features of the Thompson Chain Reference Bible is this archaeological supplement, full of um, places and pictures, um, all printed there in the back of your Bible, very handy indeed. Um, but what you'll notice is that in the fourth edition, that uh, those items go from 4320, three, 4, so 4320 to 4450, uh, sorry, 4320 to 4428. So you've basically got about 100, just over 100 um, items in that archaeological uh, supplement. However, in the fifth edition, you'll notice that it goes from uh, 4320, so from the same starting point, but this time it goes all the way to 4450. So basically, you are getting uh, 20, 22 extra items. So they have added some items into the archaeological supplement, and you only have to go to the letter A um, to see uh, straight away a couple of place names that have been added. Um, which we won't turn to, but suffice to say there are there are 20, 20 odd more um, places in the archaeological supplement. So that has added pages and that has added um, items. So that is worthy of note. You're getting a slightly more expanded, shall we say, archaeological supplement. But beyond that, there are some other um, valuable uh, additions. Um, how valuable I are, they are, I suppose, depends on how valuable you make them. But um, certainly there is also a Hebrew calendar 
which is found, actually, I think it's found after the concordance and before the maps. So you have a Hebrew calendar. Let's find that uh, over the pages. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I might be wrong about this. Uh, no, it's not. It's not after the there. It's probably after the archaeological supplement then. Uh, let's have a look. Ah, yes, this looks promising. Um, no, it's... Oh, yes, so we have a Hebrew calendar in the 5th edition. That is... That is just not there in the um, in the uh, fourth uh, in the fourth edition. It just uh, goes straight from the um, from the archaeological supplement. It goes straight to the concordance. So uh, you're missing that um, Hebrew calendar. Um, and there's also something else there. Uh, oh no, sorry, no, that that is it. So the Hebrew calendar, and then you have the glossary as well, of course. Now, the maps are different as well. There's the same amount of maps between the, t the 5th and the 4th edition, but what you will notice in the 5th edition is that Kirkbride have their own copyrighted maps from the 5th edition onwards. Uh, the 1964 4th edition has these uh, very much more archaic um, and not as attractive um, maps. I don't know who produced these maps. I think they might be Phillips. Um, they might be old Phillips maps, and I could probably uh, check that um, at a later stage, but they're certainly nowhere near as clear or as nice as the Kirkbride copyright maps. So that is the main differences. You will notice that some of the graphics and some of the tables in the 5th edition look nicer. They've got a clearer print. They've got a um, sort of bolder font to them. Um, however, <clears throat> the big difference really between the 4th and the 5th edition is just in general, personally speaking, is a, a drop in production quality. Um, if you have an earlier 5th edition, probably from the late 80s or the 90s, it will probably be pretty good. Um, but certainly anything from the last 10 years, I just haven't been impressed with. Um, I mean, there are lots of alignment issues um, in this Bible as well, which you could probably see in the archaeological supplement. You know, I mean, this is getting perilously close to the top of the page. And then on other pages, it's it's lower down and it's fine. But on, on some pages, I mean, there's a prime example there that it's almost cut, cut, the, cut the thing off. Um, you don't get that in the fourth edition. The fourth edition is just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Um, in terms of its paper, in terms of its print, obviously this one is a black letter as well. So you just find that it's uh, it's just a lovely, lovely thing. Um, so whether you think it's worth hunting down a fourth edition to get uh, that better quality is up to you. I mean, here's another example of alignment issues. Uh, Zachariah is just all the way through the top of the page there. Um, and usually Zachariah, that, that book heading... Um, Thompson puts all his uh, beginnings of books on the same page. That's how it should be. Zephaniah, you can see it's below the line there. There's a good distance between that and the top of the page, whereas Zechariah is just all the way up there. Uh, and that does affect readability uh, slightly as well, because on the next page you can see the, the, the title uh, all the way through. So, personally... Um, yeah, there are a lot. There are some features in there that are definitely worth having. There's the glossary of archaic and obsolete words that are linked to the margin, which are not in the fourth edition. Um, there is the updated origins and growth of the English Bible chart, which is quite fascinating and interesting. There is an expanded archaeological supplement in the fifth edition. There's the Hebrew calendar in the fifth edition, and there are the updated and more attractive uh, Kirkbride copyrighted maps. So there are definitely five differences that I can think of and that I can see having gone through these Bibles side by side um, that are definite improvements and, and nice to have. However, <laughs> I, I only have to open my old fourth edition and look at that crisp, um, opaque, uh, thick paper and that beautiful uh, black text, uh, even though this is old and showing signs of wear and has all old notes in. Um, this one isn't bad. You may remember I hunted long and long and hard for a decent modern TCR that I was happy with. And this one is the best that I found. The opacity is better on the large print for sure. Um, but there are still uh, some issues uh, with this. Um, there, there can't be any question about that. So 
I hope you found that interesting, looking at the 4th and the 5th edition of the Thompson Chain Reference Bible King James Version edition. Hope you're well, God bless, and we'll catch up on another video soon. Take care. Bye-bye.